Hello, uh, this is chapter one, um, and uh, in chapter one we're going to look at um, an introduction to programming and an introduction to Java. This is the first line in a series of videos um, which you're going to look at, um, and this really sets the scene in terms of what Java does um, and how programming languages work. So let's just have a quick uh, step back for a second is to say what is a computer? Well at the top of the um, slide there um, shows basically what a computer is. Um, memory, CPU, storage devices, some input output devices all connected with a bus. Uh, and that really is all a computer is underneath all of the cleverness of which it can do. The other thing is that uh, computers they only understand um, binary languages, zeros and ones is all that computers understand. They don't un understand any other language, so we have to try and convert into a um, into this. So we need a, a method of translation to convert into this binary machine code. Um, a clever little area is the uh, memory, which is shown um, on, on this picture here, um, where we have a memory address and a memory content. Um, the Again, memory has to be represented in zeros and ones. Um, and we need a, a method of translation here. So, for example, here we've got our, um, I think it's the ASCII uh, representation of J A V A, um, but again, all represented in zeros and ones. The thing we do have, though, is a memory address so we can get access to that memory. Um, we, if we would then want to manipulate those letters or do something with the, the zeros and ones in there, then we can use the CPU and the processor to do that. Um, the processor is extremely complex and, and, and clever and also very interesting to see how that all works. So if you do want to look into the memory architecture and process, I would, um, I would strongly recommend that as to give you a good background into computer programming. Um, we're not going to look into that um, at this point here. Um, I just want to have a, a little uh, further look into um, controlling computers using a programming language. So the storage of data, um, and again, in memory you can store any kind of data as long as it can be represented by zeros and ones, ultimately. Um, text files, um, PowerPoints, videos, anything, any data is stored effectively as zeros and ones in there. Any data stored in, um, in memory, in programming languages, we call these variables. Um, so variables are going to be something which you're going to work with um, a lot in, in this course. So that's all they effectively are as a storage area in memory. What we do is rather than having a, a, a digital um, or a numbered based memory address, um, we use a, a simple to use name. So we can rather than having the memory address of 2000, we can ha have the memory address of my variable. Um, so the programming language will convert names of variables into the actual memory address. Um, once that data is in memory, uh, then we can manipulate that data, um, and the manipulation of that data occurs with the processor. The processor can then do certain things to zeros and ones. Um, uh, if you can do something with zeros and ones, then then you can uh, then you can do it in the computer. In programming, we call any manipulation of data as really a function. So those are two basic building blocks which are built on the architecture of the machine. Um, just jumping on a few steps quickly, um, we also, uh, when we look at objects, we're going to see that objects have a state and they have a behaviour. Um, all the state is is a collection of variables and uh, uh, the, all the behaviour is is a collection of functions. So just bear that in mind for the time being. Before we look at object orientation, um, just a quick reminder of uh, how we got to object orientation. Earlier on in the course, Dr. Jenkins gave you a good overview of the journey between um, uh, binary to object orientation. Um, one of the first steps on that journey was to look into assembly language. And uh, through assembly language, you could control the processor and the memory. However, it was extremely complex and it was very limited um, pre-created functions. So you basically had to do everything yourself. I'd encourage you to go and have a look at that link there, which gives you a bit of an overview um, of assembly and uh, some, some great little programs which, which run. There's a couple of little games in there as well, which are quite interesting, uh, all written using assembly. Um, from there, we, we tried to, as, as computers got more complex and the, and the pro problems got more complex, we needed um, more higher level languages to make it easier for us to understand it. Um, more languages which with pre-created functions, um, and these languages, COBOL, Fortran, BASIC, and many others um, were developed. Um, again, as, as it got more complicated and uh, the problems got more complicated, um, 
we came up with this idea for object orientation. Object orientation, um, things in life have a particular state um, and uh, they have a behavior and so we tried to reflect that in computers where we said that certain things had a state and certain things had a behavior. Um, but again, these are just made up of variables and functions. Um, the clever thing then was the uh, interaction between these objects and Java takes care of that underneath the surface. Um, I mentioned the word Java, but there is ob other object orientated languages, C++ and Python included. Um, we looked into all these languages before programming uh, or before developing this course um, and we decided, and there's a lot of research which says that um, uh, Java is one of the best programming languages to learn. So why is it good? Um, it's object orientated um, and it's, it, it is good for learning um, object orientation um, according to research and according to many accounts of people doing um, this kind of learning. Um, also it's used in industry, it's one of the most used languages um, for programming in industry. Um, the good news is for you guys is lots and lots of built-in classes so we can do lots of things um, already without you having to do any programming. Um, and the API, which is the application programming interface, which shows all of the classes and all of the pre-built functions and methods and things, um, is, is pretty easy to use and pretty good. Uh, so just a little word on what actually happens underneath the surface. Uh, when you write your code, you're going to be using um, an ID called BlueJ to start with. But when you write your code, it gets saved to a .java file. Um, that Java, .java file is then compiled into a .class file. Um, and then once it's in a .class file, it can run on any machine with a Java virtual machine. Um, it's a diagrammatic representation of what happens there at the bottom. Um, we have our .java source code. Um, the compiler which Java uses is called Java C. It's the, it's the name of a little program which is the Java compiler, Javac. Um, so you run Javac, and that converts um, the .java into the .class file. Um, once that's in that position, then it can run on any um, Java virtual machine. Now, all of that is often taken care of with um, an IDE uh, or an integrated development environment, which we're going to look at now. Um, so you can write your Java code, and um, uh, at university um, they used to make us write it in, um, using the command line um, because it just shows you how it works. We're going to bypass that in this course, but just uh, just so as you know, you can write it at the command line if you like. Um, there's a lot of um, development tools which have been created uh, to um, develop uh, Java, Eclipse, NetBeans, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio is used mainly for Microsoft products but can also be used to write Java. Um, for you guys we're going to use the BlueJ and BlueJ is an absolutely cracking little um, uh, application which for, for writing Java and it's extremely good at visualizing objects and you'll see that in the next video. Um, so that's pretty much it um, for the first video. I um, hope you enjoyed it um, and I'll see you back here for the next video where we're going to look at the BlueJay basics.